Hey, Teddy K here for the Best Buy blog. And in this video, we're taking a look at the Nextbase IQ Smart Dash Cam, available at Best Buy now, and not just your regular dash cam when you really break it down. Dash cams generally have one job to do, which is to face out the windshield, and in some cases, face out the rear window, and give you a sense of security that in case anything happens, you have evidence. You have visual, recorded evidence of what occurred. Nextbase has been making dash cams for years, but the IQ takes things to a different level because it's more than a dash cam. It, it, it intends to be more like a security system, if you will, for your vehicle. It's not bulletproof, of course, but there are various elements here that are designed to give you at least more flexibility and more tools to battle you know, any chance that the car might be taken or stolen or anything like that. And with auto theft on the rise, it probably comes at a pretty good time for that. The IQ bears no resemblance to previous Nextbase dash cam. So if you've ever used one before, or if you looked at one, this is a totally different product. It, it bears no resemblance. And there's a number of reasons for that. Not least of which is the design. So the design obviously is different, but it's also because of the components inside. This camera, yes, there's a GPS signal, which of course you need for something like this, but also you have a built-in SIM card. So the always on connection means that you're always supposed to be connected to dash cam as well. The one caveat to that is that if you live in an apartment building or a condominium or something like that, and you are parked underground where there's no connection, unfortunately you can't see what the camera sees. The general idea is that you're always supposed to be connected. So you're always going to know what is going on with the car. Next space. Uh, offers this in three different variants. So the cameras all do the same. So you have a 4K model, a 2K model, and a 1080p HD model. They all effectively do the same thing. So the safety features do not really differ uh, based on resolution. It's just all about the quality of the video, basically. So uh, you pay a premium, obviously, if you're gonna go 2K or 4K, but needless to say, each one of these models is going to be pricey and there's a subscription involved, which I'll get to later. It's not hard to install the IQ, generally speaking. So you run through it, the uh, Nextbase IQ app. So this is a new app. It is different and wholly separate from the My Nextbase app that was used for the previous models. Uh, you follow the steps of the app. For placement, Nextbase only went with an adhesive here, so there is no suction cup model. One of the reasons they say for doing that is because they feel that in case of an impact or any kind of a collision, the camera is more likely to actually stay affixed to the windshield and keep on recording as opposed to like if it just completely falls off and well, you don't really see anything. Uh, again, uh, either way, the adhesive is strong. So when you actually place it on the windshield and you just follow this, the steps, you know, use the al use alcohol swabs uh, and then put it on after, it, it does stay pretty much in place. It, it, it's not easy to remove it after and, you know, you'll have to actually pry it loose in that case. The placement matters because the camera does not tilt left or right. So it'll tilt up and down. You have some leeway and some flexibility that way in, in orientation, but not left or right. So. If you wanna go straight down the middle of the windshield, just make sure that you kind of angle it the right way and that it's facing obviously out and that it has a pretty wide view uh, laterally of, of your vehicle. It is a wide view anyway. I mean, it's a 180 degree field of view, so it's huge as far as that goes. It'll see plenty, uh, but just keep in mind that if you center it, you basically have a symmetrical view of both sides. Next base will walk you through a lot of this and in as far as the physical element is concerned, in order for the camera to work, it needs a constant power source. That's gonna come either from the fuse box or it's gonna come from the onboard diagnostic port, the OBD2 port, typically found underneath the steering wheel column in, the, in vehicles. Some vehicles will have it on the passenger side, they'll have it in weird spots in some cases, but either way, you have those two options as far as the always on connection that the camera's gonna need. There's no USB connection here. So it's not like previous models where you had to plug it in with a USB connection in the car or something like that. This is this is on a different level as far as that goes. So you're gonna need to install it, literally install it that way. In fact, Nextbase even includes this uh, little tool, handy little plastic tool here to kind of pry loose some of the panels up top so that you can kind of snake the cable along uh, for a more seamless and, and more polished kind of installation. Of course, you can always go to someone that you know or a professional to, to get it done that way. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem for them to do it. And again, the, the process just to get the camera up and running 
from the installation to everything working where you just scan the QR code and get going is pretty much about 10 minutes. Once you're up and running, the IQ works a lot like any other Nextbase dash cam for the most part. So you have the live view, you have things where you, you, know, you can see live footage, you can actually see recorded footage. You can also tell the, the IQ to save a, a particular, particular moment or anything that you wanted to, to kind of keep so that it doesn't you overwrite that on the card. The camera that I got, I got, I tested the 2K model. So mine came with a 32 gig uh, at micro SD card. The 4K model comes with a 64 gig. Just keep that in mind. Of course, it's going to record in a loop. So when the card runs out, it just sort of starts over again. If you want to make sure that it's not going to overwrite any video that you have recorded, then that's an easy thing to do. You can actually even tell the camera to do that. Uh, one of the unique things about this particular model is the voice recognition. It's not extensive, so the voice recognition is limited to commands or controls that the camera offers. So you can tell it to stop or start recording or to enable witness mode or to enable or disable privacy mode. Privacy mode refers to the camera that faces in towards the cabin. If you wanted to disable that, you could do that. And of course, if you wanted the front side to, if the front camera is to stop recording, you can just tell it to do that too. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's kind of like a smart home device in that, you know, you just say, hey, dash cam. And then uh, usually variances of those phrases will work. So, for example, if you say, you know, stop or start recording or enable recording or, or start or stop witness mode, enable, stop. And, it, you know, the semantics generally will mean the same thing. Uh, but the key thing is to make sure that you get the, the wake words right. OK, there's a lot here. So. Video quality, I'm just going to say for video quality, I had no issues whatsoever. I felt that the camera uh, really, really performed well. A lot of detail, uh, you know, high resolution, the colors, uh, you know, you can make out details, which are, I think is important too, uh, in certain circumstances. So uh, that part of it, I'm not surprised, uh, worked really well, nor am I really surprised that the connection worked well. So I, 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 as long as my, my vehicle was parked uh, in a spot that had some kind of connection, so whether it was underground or above ground, as long as there was some kind of uh, LT connection available, I could see what the car sees. So that part of it worked well. The features though um, are also, you also have to decide kind of what you want to go with, right? So uh, SmartSense parking is one of those where you can decide what the radius is going to be. So uh, smart sense parking re basically refers to in case anybody loiters or, you know, is kind of lingering around your car, maybe trying to look into it, things like that. The camera's going to pick up on that because the proximity sensor within it is going to recognize that somebody is approaching the vehicle, not really moving. There are false positives with this, of course, if somebody is parked next to you and is just hanging around, <laughs> having a conversation, the camera's going to pick up on that and you then can look and see. but. Uh, the point is, is that it, it is to at least give you a heads up in case something it might be amiss while your car is parked. You can set the radius for how wide this is going to be, but I, I found the default was perfectly fine because it was with close enough to the vehicle as opposed to like going further out where all of a sudden now if someone's parked adjacent over there, it would set the, the camera off. So it, it really depends on, on what you'd like. You can, of course, can do this in the app. If you have the rear camera installed as well, you can expand the radius to also include the rear of the vehicle. As is, if you just have the IQ, it's just gonna be the front and most of the sides are gonna be covered as well. Not only that, but if someone tries to get into the car or messes with the car, the camera will also immediately record to the cloud. Uh, so, and if somebody disables the camera, then it will have recorded at least five seconds or so. So if the power is disabled, there's enough juice inside the camera itself to at least record five seconds and upload it to the cloud. The one caveat here again, is that if there is no connection. So if, for example, someone's messing with the car underground where there is no LT connection at all, no connectivity, no reception whatsoever, then the camera can't do those things. So it could record something to the card, for example, but that's not going to do any good if all of a sudden that camera's lost, right? So again, some caveats, uh, one of those things that where the always on connectivity is cool, 
but does have limitations based on where you live. Witness mode is another one of those cool ones where you can actually bring in a trusted friend or a family member to also watch what's going on. Now, this is great, I think, if you're in a situation where you're feeling scared or maybe a police stop and you wanna make sure that everything is cool. So what happens is when you enable witness mode, the person that you've entrusted will get an email. They can click on the link in that email and then watch it live in real time, the view of you in the vehicle, right? And the front of the vehicle as well. So this way also they can speak to anyone. So for example, if there's a police stop, the officer's there. Now imagine if you're a parent or somebody and you, you, know, you have a, a teen that's been pulled over and you get the alert, you would be able to actually speak with the officer uh, through the speaker on uh, the camera as well. So pretty cool feature that way, easy to enable, easy to disable as well. And one of those things that in case something happens, uh, at least someone will be alerted and, and try to find out what's going on. There were two features that I didn't get to test because they weren't ready at the time of the review. So guardian mode is actually pretty standard, I think, because it's been done before. So it's essentially where you can, uh, you'll know if someone is borrowing your car or if like someone's driving it like a valet or something like that and they've gone, you know, maybe the foot got a little heavy uh, with the car or, you know, maybe they've been taking, taking corners a little too tightly, things like that. The guarding mode will tell you those things. In addition, you can also set a geofence. So if someone is joyriding when they shouldn't be and they cross a, a border that you've set, a radius that you've set, you'll also get a notification about that too. I'm sure that'll be an interesting conversation. Then there's Roadwatch AI. This is gonna be interesting because it's gonna use AI and augmented reality to recognize how fast other vehicles are going. Other objects are moving around your vehicle as well. The reason why this is intriguing is because for insurance companies who want a clear picture of some of what, you know, collision, some sort of an incident that may have happened, they would have more data to work with to know and ascertain exactly how things happened, what was the cause and effect, that sort of thing. So this is how Nextbase envisions that feature to be really helpful. Uh, it's one of those things that, again, even for a parent, I think, uh, who may be helping a, a teen learn how to drive, things like that, what to be aware of. Uh, a feature like that could be useful, but again, it wasn't ready at the time of this review, so I don't know ultimately how effective it is, but it is coming along with Guardian Mode as well. I don't know what the future of dash cams is going to be, to be honest. Uh, a lot of newer vehicles already have cameras built in, so you would think that this kind of thing is sort of, well, obsolete or redundant because of that. But so many cars out there don't have anything like that, and, and that's really what the IQ is, is made for. That's who it's made for. It's for drivers who don't have the built-in cameras, that kind of tech, the tracking, uh, things of that nature to at least add some kind of layer of security. And maybe even you could even argue that there might be a bit of an insurance policy in this too. There might even be insurance companies who might even give, might give you a discount because you have something like this built in. I don't know, but either way for me, you know, I've been using dash cams for years. It's convenient, but you also have to factor in the costs involved. So the units themselves are expensive just to get them, but then you also have to factor in the subscription. You can use this for free. There is a free tier that works with the IQ, but on, honestly though, you miss out on all those extra features. So things like witness mode, smart sense parking, all that stuff is gone unless you go with the protect or the protect plus plan. These are either 10 or $20 per month, you will save money if you spend uh, for the annual, uh, if you get the annual um, uh, deal. So it could be like 100 bucks or 200 bucks if you go for, for the annual. One thing that's cool with the Protect Plus plan that I should point out is that if you do buy that, if you do choose to go for an annual plan for that, you actually extend the camera's warranty an extra 12 months. So it's, that's a pretty cool feature as well and something to think about if you worry that this will last, you know, what kind of long-term durability does it have? when it comes to Canadian weather. Very, very cold winters, very hot summers, things like that. Uh, Nextbase did build this to be pretty durable. It kind of shows, I think, even when you when you kind of hold it, uh, but it's always something, it's always nice to have an extra warranty, in my opinion. And that's my review of the Nextbase IQ Smart Dash Cam, available at Best Buy right now. You can click on the link below to find out more about it. For the Best Buy blog, I'm Teddy K. Thanks for watching.